The next few slides, I'll be talking about color. There are three properties of color um, that define it, hue, saturation, and lightness. Hue is what we mean when we ask a two-year-old, what color is this? Um, in the left of this chart, the hue is blue. In the right, the hue is orange. Saturation is sort of the purity of the color. As you can see, as the saturation increases, the orange is a pure orange, the blue is a pure blue. As the saturation decreases, the colors get grayer. And lightness, darkness, um, they're whiter when they're lighter and blacker when they're darker. I wish my only improvement to the slide would be to say darkness, lightness, so that it went in the same order as the figure goes. But that's what we mean by hue, saturation, and lightness. This was done by Cindy Brewer, and she discusses three types of schemes for choosing colors. In a sequential scheme, you have one hue with varying saturation and lightness. And that's very good for quantitative data. You go from lighter to darker. Qualitative schemes are different hues with the same saturation and lightness, which is very good for categorical data. Things, if you have three countries, you don't want to make one more important than the other by having it more saturated or so that different hues of the same saturation is good for qualitative. In diverging, you have a neutral color in the middle going out in two directions. For example, with the Likert scale, you might have no opinion as neutral and then agreement going out in one color and disagreement going out in the other. It's important to use the right color scheme. Here is a map. It comes from the Journal of American Water Resources Association. And you can see a big divide in the middle of the country where the yellow and green, or at least it looks like a big divide. Um, now, all I'm going to do is blow up the scale on the bottom so you can see it more clearly. And you can see that the green is 0.7 to 0.79. The yellow is 0.8 to 0.8. They're not that different. It looks like there's this big difference, but they're adjacent values. What I've done here is just do it in grayscale. So you can see 0 0.7, 0 0.8 are very different, but they're adjacent. And you can see that going from 0 to 1.29, we go all over the place. In colors, we get darker, lighter, darker, lighter, so that the impression you got from the qualitative scheme is completely false. And here it is in a sequential scheme, and you don't see that divide at all. The slight difference of color you see is quite a bit further west than the divide we saw before. And if you look there, you can see that the colors are sequential. We go from light to dark. A major problem in charts done in almost any field, not just life science, is that they don't consider people with color vision deficiencies. Lots and lots of books I've read and lots and lots of speakers I've heard have said, just avoid red and green. Just avoiding red and green does not solve the problem. Most people who have color problems can distinguish between a very dark red and a light green or a very dark green and a light red. Lightness has a lot to do with it. And here I'm going to show you several figures that are orange and green. Um, orange and green was the latest fashion in recent years. Um, this is from the census, and here I've done a simulation of how people with color problems, this one is protonope, which have people who have problems with their red cone, and you can see how they see it. 
This one is deuteranopes, which are a problem with their green cone. And again, we see orange and green on the left. Uh, someone with problems might see it as we see on the right. When I draw a chart, I always run it through a color vision simulator. I used to use VizCheck. It is not available anymore. I now use Color Oracle, and I've discovered that GraphPad people use Color Oracle. Um, so I highly recommend running your figure through something like Color Oracle. That's good for, um, I believe, both PC and Mac. There are a lot of them for a Mac. I happen to have a PC and don't know that many. Using gradient backgrounds can be a problem. If you look at the left, I have a gray square. All the squares on the right are exactly that color, but they look darker on a light background. They look lighter on a dark background. So gradient backgrounds are a problem. This shows you why. Thank <laughs> you.